Hey guys, uh, welcome, uh, welcome to the group. Uh, really appreciate uh, all the interest in to mapping. Um, I, I would like to try to make this as painless as possible. I know that there's there's some information out there, but there's not. It, it's it's kind of scattered and and uh, throughout other Facebook pages and I just figured shoot I'll try to make this as easy as possible and create a Facebook page that is dedicated to mapping uh, specifically with the unique um, I know a lot of the people uh, want to map with the unique Typhoon H a 480 and the plus and of course a 920 you could do it it takes a little bit of work but with some tools that I, I, I think that I can offer you will help help out in that there's there's a few of us there in this group that have the 520 and uh, uh, those guys are interested in learning how to map to you and I'm I'm more than happy to show anybody. So uh, with that said, let's uh, let's go here for uh, the people who don't have the Data Pilot app. We'll go down and download it, but I'll show you where to go find it. So uh, what we'll do is uh, on on my Facebook page, I put a link. right here so click on that and scroll down to the bottom where it says apps you'll have a data pilot for Windows and a data pilot for Mac those are the ones that you'll use the data pilot for the APK works on the Android system I haven't tried it on my phone or on a tablet or anything like that but if it if you want to try it go ahead and go for it it might work it might not i don't know um i personally don't like to work off my phone or a tablet i like to work off my laptop or my computer or the st16 so download it download download whatever version you want uh for your for your operating system or your type of computer okay so i already have it downloaded so i'm not going to go through that process <clears throat> So here I have Data Pilot. We'll get it opened up here. And uh, for the for the users who uh, who uh, don't know anything about Data Pilot, when you download it and you initially run it, your virus scan do, does not like it. Um, it'll reject it. And I think the reason it rejects it is because Data Pilot uses information on your location. Uh, this Y is the unique symbol here, and it shows pretty much where I'm at. So, uh, in, in in the world, and I think that's the reason the virus scans don't like it. With that said, go ahead and let it run. It's safe. It's uh, made by Unique, and uh, I've never had any problems with the. Uh, with information or anything like that being stolen or whatever you know your concerns are okay <coughs> sorry yeah got a slight cold here let's get started I like to change my settings here so I'll go in here to the unique symbol here and under the general tab I, I uh, since I live in the United States I use I use a uh, uh, imperial uh, uh, measurements so uh, which include feet inches uh, miles per hour acres things like that um, for our, our buddies who live abroad and uh, use the metric system you could change all that in here hold on a second got a phone call all right anyway so you can change the meters uh, the area I like acres, but you can use square feet, square meters, square kilometers, hectares, acres, acres, square miles. Uh, color scheme, I, I choose, I like the indoor, but you can choose outdoor color scheme if you want. Your map provider, I use I use Google Earth all the time. So I, I tend to lean towards Google, Google Maps. But if you click on it and you like Bing, use Bing. If you like any of the other ones, use them. Uh, I, I do a lot of work in Esri as well, so I do use Esri. Uh, just makes uh, things a little easier for me uh, when I'm mapping and uh, 
looking at areas, things like that. It, it just you just choose the one that looks best for you. And then you, of course, uh, underneath that you have a satellite map, or you could have street map or terrain map. Sometimes I'll bounce between satellite and terrain. Uh, I live in a mountainous area, so uh, I need to know elevations. And uh, we all know that in those elevations they they can change uh, with trees and bushes and things like that. So you got to keep that in mind when. Uh, uh, mapping so anyways let's step into this so i'll go back here and um let's cruise east here a lot of you guys already know how to use data pilot or some of you guys know how to use data pilot so i'm sorry this is a little bit redundant but uh, a majority of people on this uh, site have never used it again this is a tool that i think that would really help those people out that have the the h4 480 the plus and of course the 920 so let's cruise over here generally you'll know where you're going to map so it's it'll be easy to find a, a thing that you want to map but um we'll cruise through here and see what we can find here something fairly decent to map anyways Okay, so let's let's say this is the area that needs to be mapped. And it looks like a pretty cool area to map anyways. It looks like there's some elevation changes, things like that. So the first thing I'd like to do is uh, I go up here and I go to the survey. On this on this grid, this auto grid basically, it's it's big, it covers a big area. Um, we can adjust it, make it smaller. Of, of course, the guys who have autopilot already know this, but uh, for the guys who don't, this this is where I think really help you guys out. So um, basically, these lines here, this this little grid area here, is the path that the 520 will fly. The fly 520, I can move it. I can move the uh, bird to say, let's say I want to launch right there. It'll fly to this entry point, which is number designated by number three and then it'll fly this line taking pictures all the way down it'll make its turn come back into the green and start taking pictures again and it does this it goes up and down up and down up and down up and down so i don't want to do this whole area i just want to kind of get this other little area here so we're going to adjust this here And get this adjusted here. Well, basically, what we're working with is a polygon here. Heck, let's do there. Okay, so now we notice the H is way over here, so we're gonna move it, and it's just a general area we're gonna launch from. So let's say we can launch from there. Now, now for you guys with the 480s, the pluses, 920s, it isn't gonna matter for you because you can't use this in your in your bird for automated uh automated flight the 520 is the only one that'll do the automated flight doing a survey mode <clears throat> okay so now we got these points here and so basically my my drone will take off it'll fly to this this spot right here this entry point and then it'll start flying this grid 
up and down, up and down, all the way across. It'll come out over here at the exit, fly back to me and land. Okay, so uh, up here we have some distance uh, uh, or some some information here. Um, the distance is uh, 17,102 feet. Time to fly at 17 minutes and 32 seconds. Maximum telemetry distance, uh, 1,114 feet. Batteries required is one. Um, it might give you guys an idea who, who fly the, the other uh, uh, H series other than the 520 on how many batteries it's going to take. It may, it may take you more because you guys got to do things a little more manually. Okay. So we're here. Um, let's see here. Click on a few of these things here. Um, okay. So now we got this all opened up here. My overlap, my frontal lap, that's this going this way is 70%. I could choose my camera here. I can choose the knee 50 or whatever. You could also do a custom grid or manual grid, no specs. I, I haven't used those items because I have an E90 camera. So, uh, but if you, if you uh, want to play with those and you get a chance, do it. Okay, so we got that. Uh, camera angles uh, zero degrees, so when it's facing straight down, that's a, a nadir position. It's a uh, zero degrees. Turnaround distance is eight feet. That's these little little areas here. That's my my journal fly, and then it'll make a turn. Now I can make that bigger. I can make it thirty two feet, and it, which will extend that out, and that way it gives the bird the, enough time to slow down and and then uh, come back into the into the next line um, depending on the area you're at some some areas have power lines and stuff around it um, so you might want to either uh, make your turnaround shorter if not you can make them big uh, I'll, I'll change it real quick here for you so you can see just keep an eye on the screen so let's make the turnaround 32 feet so, there you go so it goes out 32 feet <clears throat> um, just for that, I'll, I'll, I'll leave it like that just because I can. So uh, I had uh, talked a little bit about um, overlap and things like that. When you're, the closer you fly to the ground, the more overlap you'll need. With that overlap, uh, uh, you'll, it does, it, it'll increase. So like if I were to fly at 30 feet, I may need to look like an 80% overlap. Um, 80 feet to 120 feet, 70% works great. If I'm at 300 feet, I need to, uh, my overlap can be like drastically lower, like maybe 50%. Um, it all depends on your, on your, uh, your camera on its, uh, basically its view, its viewpoint, uh, the FOV. Anyway, so uh, uh, another good thing about about your about knowing uh, uh, how high you need to be versus uh, like if you want to fly low, yeah, you'll have you'll have a more overlap. So there, these uh, lines are pretty close together. Um, but your ground resolution is really if the closer you are to the ground, the better ground resolution you have. The farther above the ground. Uh, like if I were to fly at 300 feet, I could change that. Um, let's see here. Altitude. Okay. So if I, uh, right now I'm at 82 feet, this is what my mission would be flown as. If I change that to 300 feet, watch the grid. Boom. That's the pattern that my drone will fly. Of course, it takes less battery. Uh, there's there's a whole whole lot less turnarounds, things like that. But look at my uh, ground resolution is now 1.06 inches per pixel so uh, um, generally I like to fly fairly close to the ground that way I get a lot of detail so I usually my default is pretty much 82 it just depends on the on the surroundings and what the site is if the site has buildings and things like that you know you might want to you might want to consider going higher so you don't hit a building or a tree or a power line or a structure so once once you have that uh, information here, this is what this is where it'll really help the 
the guys who don't own a 520. So we have our, down here we have some data here. Uh, it's approximately 13.72 acres. Photo count is 590. Photo, photo interval is 1.6 seconds. So you guys who uh, have to manually put your points in, uh, you kind of have an idea of, of uh, the interval to set your uh, time lapse up as is uh, every one second, every two seconds, something like that. So basically 1.6 seconds is a picture is taken. <coughs> I do recommend that uh, the people with the 480s uh, stop to take their picture instead of just keep on cruising. Uh, that's, that's just me. I, I just think that uh, uh, I, don't, I don't think it has a rolling shutter. The CGO 3 or 3 Plus, I believe, don't have a, has a rolling shutter. But you may want to try it. And, and if, if it works better for you, the pictures come out a little nicer, great. I, I can tell you that uh, pictures with a whole bunch of curvature in them, when you go to put it in Pix4D or, or uh, Drone Deploy, or even Esri to have it stitched together, it'll look like a nightmare. So um, I need to uh, do another discussion about uh, batch editing photos uh, to crop those so that way there you got flat horizons and things like that. Uh, Pix4D has an option for the H520 that you can select to the crop uh, it like kind of auto it corrects those those curvatures at our horizons um unique is uh i think kind of got the got the horizon thing fixed but um some people i still know have issues with it anyways uh with that said uh, i'll conclude this video for right now and we can discuss it if anybody has questions uh uh feel free to to ask your questions and we can move on from there but I'd like to just kind of keep this simple and uh, uh, in in terms that everybody can understand uh, and uh, go from there thanks guys